Welcome back to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll explore functions in detail. This module is broken up into six parts. In the first part, we'll introduce the motivation for why we design and use functions, as well as cover how to do so in C. In the second part, we'll make our code more module by breaking our functions out into separate files and libraries. In the third part, we'll cover in detail how functions actually work and the subtle nuances that are necessary to understand other issues. Then we'll move to an in-depth discussion on one of the most difficult aspects of C, pointers. We'll then use pointers to introduce functions that use pass by reference as a mechanism for computing. First, we'll cover what functions are and how to create them. In general, a function is an object that produces an output when given an input or multiple inputs. You should be well familiar with this concept from mathematics. Functions can take a single input or multiple inputs. The value of the function for certain inputs is its output. For the first function, an input of 3 produces an output of 9. An input of 2 and 4 for the second function produces an output of 16. Just as in mathematics, a function can only ever produce at most one output. Unlike math functions, in code it is possible to have a function with no output. A function may also take as many inputs as you like, including none at all. Functions in code are very similar, and in fact we use the familiar syntax of enclosing the inputs in parentheses. In the context of programming languages, a function is a reusable unit of code that may take a number of inputs and may produce an output. You're already familiar with several functions. The code of every program that you've written so far is contained inside of the main function. You've used printf and scanf for basic input and output, as well as common math library functions such as square root. Here's a small example that we'll use to get down some terminology. When you use a function, you call or invoke it. On line 4, we call the square root function with an input of x. This also illustrates that functions can and frequently do call other functions. In this case, the main function is calling the square root function. When a function calls another function, it is called the calling function. In this example, main is the calling function. A function may also return a value to the calling function. We have two examples of this here. The square root function is returning a value, the square root of 2, to the main function, which is being captured in the variable y on line 4. The main function is also returning a value, in this case a value of 0 on line 6. Strictly speaking, no function is calling or invoking the main function. The operating system itself is doing that. The return value of 0 is actually an exit code that communicates to the operating system that the program executed normally. A non-zero exit code would indicate some sort of an error. We'll revisit this when we cover error handling. So why do we use functions in programs? The first reason is that functions facilitate code reuse. Imagine if, every time we wanted to compute the square root of a number, we had to cut and paste the code that computed it. As you can imagine, that wouldn't work well in practice. It would be error prone and lead to a lot of redundancy. If you do ever find yourself doing this, it's a huge red flag that you should be writing and reusing a function. Another reason is what is known as procedural abstraction. If you have a complex algorithm, such as computing a square root, then writing a function and putting the details inside the function allows you to ignore these details elsewhere in your program. You don't have to worry about how the function works, just that it does and that you can use it. It reduces the cognitive load that you have to bear when coding and problem solving, so that you can focus on the actual problem rather than unimportant details. We say that functions encapsulate these details into reusable blocks of abstract code. To use the square root function, again, how does it work? We saw one solution in a previous module, but really, who cares? Our concern is with some larger problem. Another reason to use functions is that it really speeds up and improves development. The standard libraries are full of useful functions. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel and write our own input-output functions, for example. Likewise, there are thousands of external libraries out there that we can bring in and use and don't have to start from scratch. Without functions, none of this would be possible. These libraries also have a huge advantage over rolling our own solutions. They're generally well-tested, well-designed, and optimized. We can't possibly hope to match the thousands of person hours invested in their design or the countless proven computing hours behind these libraries. 
Functions are also fundamental building blocks of what is known as top-down design. Top-down design simply means that you take a complex problem and break it down into smaller components until they're so simple that they can trivially be solved or that a pre-built solution already exists. In fact, this is the first question you should always ask yourself when designing anything. Does an off-the-shelf solution already exist that can be used or adapted? In the context of coding, you should always ask yourself, does a function already exist that I can reuse? We already have a good grasp of how standard functions can be used in C. So how do we create our own? Just as with variables, functions have to be declared before they can be used. You declare a function using what is called a prototype that specifies the function's signature. A function's signature is composed of three things. The name or identifier of the function, a list of its parameters, also called arguments. This includes both the number of parameters, i.e. the number of inputs, and their type. Finally, the function's return type, that is, what type of data does the function return? Here's an example of a prototype. This function is intended to compute the Euclidean distance between two points. Let's highlight the syntax and style in this example. First, functions always need documentation detailing the what. What does this function do? What's its purpose? Here we've used doc style comments that begin with a slash star star and have a vertically aligned column of stars. Documentation is usually included with the prototype and only the prototype. We don't want documentation in multiple places as it violates the don't repeat yourself principle. The return type is indicated here. This function returns or outputs a double value. The identifier is next. We've used lower camel casing and will be consistent about this convention in the future. We then have a comma delimited list of parameters inside parentheses. This function takes four double values as its input. Finally, the prototype ends with a semicolon and no function body. This is just a declaration. We're letting the compiler know that there's this function out there named Euclidean distance that takes four double inputs and produces a double output. Later on in the program, we provide the function definition. We do so by repeating the function's signature, but also include the function's body inside opening and closing curly brackets. Inside the function, we place the code that will be executed when the function is called. We've declared a variable named temp to hold a value that will return then on line four. This variable is a local variable and only exists within this function. Likewise, the parameter variables are also local and only exist within the function. Again, we observe that we have a function that calls another function. In this case, the Euclidean distance function is calling the square root function. Let's demonstrate a working version of this. First, the boilerplate. We'll read in four command line arguments. If they don't provide us four command line arguments, we'll quit on them with an error code of one. Now let's call our function. Let's try to compile this and see what happens. At first we get a warning. The compiler doesn't know what the Euclidean distance function is. And when it tries to create an executable, the linker fails to link it in. Again, like variables, functions have to be declared before they can be used. We'll bring in our prototype before the main function. Now at least the compiler will be aware that there's this function out there called Euclidean distance that takes four inputs and produces a double output. The warning is now gone. However, the linker still has problems. It doesn't know where that function is, so it fails to generate an executable file. Elsewhere in our program, after the main, we can place the actual function definition. From point 00, 0 to point 22, it's a distance of 2.82.
Again, a prototype is all that's necessary for the compiler to know that the function exists. Some other things to note. The temp variable declared in the function Euclidean distance is again local to the function. The main function has no idea about the temp variable. If we attempted to print it instead, there'd be a compiler error. In fact, we don't even need to declare this local variable. Instead, we can return the value of the expression directly. One common pitfall that we'll cover later on is a lack of a return statement. Syntactically, it's correct. Strictly speaking, you don't have to return a value in C. If you don't, however, it'll lead to undefined behavior and incorrect results. Using GCC as a proper linter will help you find these errors. In the next part, we'll improve this even further by separating out our functions into different files.